what they put out so shout out to cookies creams and the boys over there definitely looking good and gonna be going into game number two here looking to actually put a point on the board they they looked good right there but i mean what do they say close only counts in horseshoes and hand grenades something along and those slow lines dancing. breaking and slow dancing that's inappropriate there that's... could be children watching <laughs> but <laughs> i mean plenty of children watching. there are in any case we're gonna be getting here into game number two and lions there's uh, there's definitely a keeper of the forest on the team already. We'll see what else they're going to get uh, combined with them. I think a Wretched Hag pick is going to be in order. Right now, I'm... Uh... Wait, Wretched Hag's already on this side. What am I talking about, Breaky? I'm out of it. Yeah. This Winamp situation so, is really just... It's it's <laughs> taking it out of me right now. Music. Music. We need VTC beats. I'm trying to get the VTC beats, and Winamp's like, I hate VTC beats. It keeps right. crashing every time I turn, turn it on. It's the worst. Bad stuff. Um, but no, you know, the thing that's standing out to me first off is, of course, the bands that you had Engineer, Tempest, Parasite, and Scout were actually overall. Uh, but uh, obviously, AL taking out Tempest. They do live Keeper, though. And, you know, it, it, it's always it's that, it's that question, especially as of late. I almost want to say if you're not planning on picking up Keeper yourself, you probably want to ban Keeper instead of Tempest. I almost want to say because I think Lions is actually a lot more comfortable overall with keeper i mean no and especially on top of that they could run it obviously as suicide as everyone else does but hanskin plays a fantastic a fantastic jungle keeper on top of that so it is not an obvious like it might be with a lot of other teams so that's kind of the only thing that really stands out to me but they, they do bend the tempest they leave keeper open they pick up affiliate themselves they get the keeper though but how about that finish we got hag and master ravener into moon queen that's how things are going to finish off so I'm sure AL Cookies, you know, obviously there's been a lot of hype around Ravener. It does make you wonder once again, though, Cookies, being being out a little bit, he's gonna be he's coming back here. Great player, fun to watch. How is he gonna do with Ravener? Ravener seems like a hero that's that's good for him, though. He likes that man up kind of style of play, and Ravener's all about that. So I gotta figure he's gonna do decent here. Yeah, I'm gonna give Lions a little bit of a taste of their own medicine right here, but Lions picking up the Moon Queen themselves, gonna maybe hedge their bets and say, all right, last time we went with a strategy that might have had a little bit of a window right there. Things got a little bit scary. We're going to go with the Moon Queen. There's no window on this hero. We're just going to kind of win throughout because Moon Queen. And definitely yeah. uh, a strong hero. Get the farm on her that she needs, and she's able to get the job done. And I'm looking forward to seeing that one come out. Second set of bands coming as well. Cookies <laughs> respecting the Super KGE. That's all a I got to say. A lot of teams say. do that. Yeah. It's a smart strategy. Of, I mean... Well, it is. I mean, they pick up the Ravener, and then, yeah, they ban Devour Prisoner, so all about that. I mean, the final ban here, it's going to be interesting to see what the ultimate goes. I'm still waiting for something like a Gauntlet, though, to come up. You know, I know I know, we mentioned that today, but he talked about it. I was like, yeah, he's a good hero, but they've never really ran it. But it, he has he has the hook, just like the others, and obviously they made that buff to him a little bit ago now, where it's his, max, his level 4 hook is actually the same as Devour's hook. Um, it would be fun to see. It would be fun to see, but uh, I don't know if that is going to be happening here in the end. Probably not, in fact, but uh, I'm still waiting for that day, Super KG, so if you happen to listen to this later there you go uh the final bands though was bubbles into swift blade actually so kind of interesting there lions going sandrith kraken and swift blade with their final band maybe al's has been doing a little bit of swift play themselves um recently but uh they, they they're carry heavy bands is is safe to say obviously with the moon queen coming out for themselves al though they still need a support for ravener you would think and then either oh you okay there <laughs> yeah, Breaky. Uh, either <laughs> viewers didn't hear that. I muted my mic. Okay. <laughs> Anyways, either uh, a Pharaoh here, maybe like a suicide option, or uh, or or support. Again, it depends on where they want to put that wretched hag in the end. Um, in terms of if they're gonna have him short or even that suicide himself. So it's gonna be interesting. Al taking a lot of time here. <laughs> you sound like you are. Again, it sounds like they can't actually hear it, but holy crap, man. Hopefully you are okay. I choked on some water. It was uh, that happens. definitely a little bit of an issue right there. Uh, Andromeda yeah. being the snap pick there from Lions. So definitely have their their pair up with Moon Queen. And yes, I think this is the game for Gauntlet. I think mm -hmm. this is actually a game that yeah. Gauntlet would be rather interesting but i think there's probably a few more options that super kg might be a little bit more comfortable with but i don't know man i'm, I'm well, kind of looking here and i don't know really what hmm. i can see something like maybe like a torturer master mid would it be out of the question a very aggressive dual range uh, i know torture isn't really more of lines take necessarily but uh that wouldn't be out of the question zephyr is the final pick 
coming out from AL. So there you go. A little bit, a couple of answers there. Interesting. Uh, they go with the Zephyr, probably going to end up a short lane, hagging that suicide. And you got Ravener Glacier setting up mid with Ophelia in the jungle, but good push potential coming out. Yeah, definitely. And so talking about anti-push, hard to push into. Pebbles definitely still on the board right here. Rally is available as well. Outside of that, I think that a, a really interesting uh, non-standard pick would be a Predator, but I some reason don't see that one coming out. Fade is still on the board as well, so lots of heroes for KGE to really play, but I, I think uh, they're probably going to lean toward Pebbles here momentarily. We will have to see. They got 55 seconds to make that decision, but I got to say, with uh, AL's team, the way that they've been drafting and playing so far, it does kind of remind me of TMSR a little bit more than, than any other team. And right now, again, going with a, another Tricor here, Ravener, Zephyr, and Wretched Hag, all three going to be looking to get their farm on. And that's mm -hmm. definitely kind of what it reminds me of. Now, uh, I talked to Swindle Mons about how they, they kind of plan to shut that down going into the Grand Finals of SBHL just a few days ago. And he was saying that you really have to target uh, the heroes that aren't able to recover. So maybe targeting something like this Ravener, uh, which would mean getting a Master of Arms plus an aggressive ganker mid that allows Andromeda to really come in. I think that a fade could be really interesting. But okay, it's going to be a Pharaoh... So the, what they're gonna do then? Aggro are they try. jungle keeper here? No, it's gonna be well, that, or or it could be a jungle keeper. Yeah, that's that's possible. Um, they're swapping things around still. We'll see who ends up with what. Okay, it is gonna be a suicide keeper. No, Trilling? Oh, they're no, gonna no, run, no. they're gonna, gonna do the aggressive try. Trilling. Yeah. yeah. So it's so not really a suicide keeper. So short lane keeper probably, or maybe yeah. even mid, but. It'll be a short okay. lane keeper with a Pharaoh mid, and then a uh, an aggressive tri lane featuring Moon Queen MOA and uh, Andromeda Bottomman with three point and click long duration stuns. That's going to be mm -hmm. easy kills on Zephyr uh, very early on. Now it's going to be up to Absolute Legends to make a, a little bit of a rotation happen here, and I'd actually like to see them put the uh, Ophelia up top along with Zephyr Glacius, throw Wretched Hag in the bottom lane, and then allow Ravener to go one v one mid. If Lions rotates, then you can rotate your lanes accordingly, but that would actually give Absolute Legends the best chance, in my opinion. Yeah. Well, we'll see if Absolute Legends does it once they... It, the question is, though, one is... I mean, get, there has Which team has been known for doing this recently? I'm actually blanking on that. Because I know a team has been running an aggressive trial lane with Moon Queen fairly recently. We've seen it pop up here every now and then. I, I'm blanking on who it actually is, but I'm sure the chat will bring it up. But anyways... You kind of wonder if AL's done that research on that. We are going to see the... Oh, the Mud Walls come up. Zephyr in some trouble. Pharaoh obviously in the front line as well. Zephyr dropping quickly, though. Zephyr's going to fall. Bloodlust in favor of Line Esports Club. Super KG Nature's Veil coming out. He's going to be fine. Moonbeam on to Glacius now. They're chasing him out. Obviously, there's no more CC. No root by any means. Going to be coming out from Keeper. So, no! The Comestun hits, though. He's going to try to hero block him now. Freeze on him and Travana. The Mummy Walls go up, though. Down goes Glacius. And now Ravener in a little bit of trouble himself. Zephyr's running back now after his death and resurrecting. Master of Arms gonna be fine. This is chaos beef. It's chaos. And trauma is gonna fall. <laughs> I think it might be the end. Uh, yeah, looks like they are gonna start running away now. But no, Ball Lightning. They still want more beef. Yeah, but Ravener's gonna be the one that's turned around on right here. Ravener is gonna go down. He does manage to help take out one more. There's another wall. Mummy's <laughs> gonna be going up here. Breaking, we got five kills as the horn sounds, and it does not look over yet. Moon Queen getting body blocked out. There's the cuss backward, and the auto tanks will be enough to finish off Moon Queen. Now, what about Pharaoh? Is he gonna survive? Oh! No. Moon Queen gonna live! Maybe! The oh. Hot, oh, the canceled auto attack! Need one more right here, but she gets up the hill on the backside. Ophelia gonna be taking a lot of damage. Pharaoh has another wall of mummies up, but Glacier is going to be coming in, gets the freeze onto him. Moon Queen is going to get out of there. Wretched Hag diving the tower. <laughs> what is going on? Zephyr's now in trouble. Zephyr's going to end up falling after this chase. Are you kidding me? A four for two exchange is how it's going to end. And now they'll finally get to their lanes. But I, I, I don't know. I don't even know what to make of that. I, I don't even know. I mean, Lions obviously won it in the end, especially with Moon Queen somehow <laughs> living at the last second. Like, beautiful health potion used by him, but where the uh, I don't I don't know, Beef. I don't even want to try to even begin to analyze that. That was just that was just amazing to watch. Chaos from the beginning, and well, our end result is uh, a much better start for Lions actually. Oh, yeah. I guess is the easy way to put it. You gotta look at where the hero kills go, and uh, getting them on supports is always really n nice. Hanskin able to upgrade the courier, able to buy the. Additional wards, more regen for his team. 
And he's already got something like the Mana Battery. Uh, now he's going to be trying to block out as many of Ophelia's camps as possible. Because he didn't get that done during the two-minute fight. Needs to go ahead and address those camps now, but already Moon Queen uh, going to be getting some pretty good lane position here momentarily in the bottom lane. Zephyr will start to be zoned out very, very quickly, and overall, Lions should have a good time in all of their lanes. Keeper of the Forest with uh, 300 regen, and already a completed Ring of the Teacher up top. Hag has no chance there, and in the middle lane, Pharaoh versus Ravener. Not a matchup that I've seen, but I gotta say, just because of the way in which Ravener uh, does get aggressive, I think that Pharaoh's had a good spot. Glacius is trying to come in to get the freeze, but it's not going to happen. And yeah, Lions well, there in a good spot. You do look at that. I mean, I guess both sides really, but Ravener did get the early bottle because of what else ultimately happened there. But True. so did Feral for that matter. So yeah, it's kind of just talking like an even right there as far as the exchange between the two. And speaking of the bottle, Haystrom is going to be bottled up here by Feral at the bottom lane. He's already level four, actually. I mean, so is Ravener, I guess. So again, them two kind of neck for neck as far as really being impactful here. Early on, but Zephyr might be in some trouble now. He knows it. Comet's done coming out right here. The auto attack's going to follow. No Aurora from Andromeda. Now level two just yet. Doesn't matter, though. The final auto attack. And even with the gust hitting both, it was not enough for King Plato to get away right there. So that's a big gank out of Zephyr. And that's going to really start opening it up for Moon Queen now. And you kind of wonder, is they all going to look to adjust here? But, you know, can they? They, it's They're in a tough spot now right off the bat. Yeah, uh, I would have liked to have seen that adjustment earlier on uh, to give them a little bit stronger of lanes. They're going to try for Pharaoh in the middle lane. The ball lightning is going to connect. He's got that haste, though. He'll just activate that one and, and run away. There's no threat whatsoever. He actually has the chance to turn this one around. Um, after he chugs a bottle charge right here in a tree, he can turn this around and try to get a kill. But Ophelia already heading up the top river, so Pharaoh not going to try to set that one up just yet. And also wants to make sure Emily hits level 2, but he does. And they can still try to get this kill. Yeah, so making the exchange up here, you see Wretched Ag pointing to the bottom lane. Uh, but now Hag's farm is really going to start to die off. I mean, it really wasn't doing the best up here at the top end of the first place. But look at the transition right away from Lions. They're yeah. like, okay, we know what you're doing. We're not going to waste any time absolutely waiting for it. We're just going to move ourselves right away. And now you have a short late free farming Moon Queen all of a sudden. And Keeper's just going to play Suicide where he normally plays, and it's all starting to really come together uh, in the end. Pharaoh is going to remain kind of in this middle matchup here. Um, as he will bottle up the refresh room. Top room, they want to battle for it. Ophelia's going to block him out. Master of Arms in trouble. Hansking gets Gusta back in. Do they have a Skeleton King? That might not matter. As, yeah, they will just get the kill anyways. And double damage will eventually be bottled up, I'm sure, by Ravener. So good rune control coming out right there by, uh, by Absolute Legends, at least. But free farming Moon Queen, always dangerous. Ravener, cookies again, a good start, just like last game on Pandemonium. He was off to the better start compared to anyone else on his team, at least. We'll see a snowball here from Ravener, perhaps. Um, at least that's going to be the goal, I'm sure, from AL in this case. Yeah, we, we definitely could see that, and he's going to generate a lot of pressure for his team because everybody else is really suffering right now, and there's not really going to be an opportunity for either the Ratchet Hag or the Zephyr. Maybe you can really get one of them back into the farm game, but probably not both, and I think that it's going to have to be the Ratchet Hag here in lane. They'll probably have to send Zephyr into the jungle, which is going to mean that Ophelia will then suffer. So overall, it's just not going to be ideal because Lions are making sure to really, really have strong lanes. And with those strong lanes, denying the resources to their opponents. So Lions just going to continually get into a better and better position here, Breaky. And uh, I don't know. A lot of it comes down to the laning position. A lot of it down to the level one fight. And I just realized... I had, a, I had a seven kill level one fight in TMM two days ago against Creams in like 1900 TMM. <laughs> so this is all Creams. This is all him right here. Yeah, he I guess there's one, one team to do it. In the middle end, in the meantime, Cookie's oh. going in with that double damage. <laughs> Holy crap, a lot of damage. Did have some great assistance from Ophelia coming in with the nuke at least. And that no doubt helped right there. So some good setup coming out. Onto, uh, onto Super KG in that middle lane on a Pharaoh. Meanwhile, bottom lane though, Root's gonna be used effort. A lot of trouble. Kuko's down. He gets oh. blast shot away. That was the wrong move right there from uh. Hanskin. Definitely misclick. Hanson's gonna get back fired on. He will eventually fall right here as the counter is in. However, will he actually? Nature's Bill applied. The dot damage. Nice deny from Total Fan at least to prevent the worst case scenario. But still, that misclick really, really screwed lines there as a whole. Yeah, Hanskin did not deserve that deny. Like, he should have died like a man after screwing up like that. I mean, because it was a massive screw up right there, Breaky. That should have been a kill into Zephyr. Instead, Zephyr turns it around. Uh, doesn't get an assist for a kill because of that deny, of course. But able to get some free farm going on right now. And that's exactly what Plato needed to get uh, at least a little bit more back into this game. Buy himself some space. So 
big mistakes and definitely can't give too many of those up but level six moon queen's coming in now now she's gonna want to look for at least one more yeah she's like here we go take two without master of arms this time see if we can now get the kill aurora comes out the moon finale and oh, look at the double tap <laughs> does food so you mentioned level six obviously a keto right there master's like i'm here oh you, you did it never mind here's a health potion i'll help you out anyways uh, and obviously just having some fun with handskin right there but no well played by lions of course a great response on their part and king plato four deaths already we're only seven minutes into this game He's already looking at four deaths, being one and four on Zephyr. Not a good start at all that, that you're looking for, at least. And uh, I feel like I'm repeating myself, just like last game, but once again, Ravener, Cookies, it's going to be on his shoulders here to have a good start. We'll see where he gets. I'm very intrigued on this build, because Ravener is still one of those newer heroes. There's no set build on him by any means. Yeah. I mean, he could go the early portal key, go the helm, could go the Insanitarius, the Ice Brand route, the Super KG love from the beginning, and who knows? Where I, I feel like it's going to be a portal key, to be honest, being cookies, but we'll see. I, I think Sorry. that's a very realistic possibility here, but he's just holding it down middle lane. Top farmer on his team. Not top farmer on the game because Moon Queen has been involved in six hero kills with no deaths to her name. And still, on top of that, 50 CS. Casual 50 CS at the eight minute mark. So Fuzzy definitely having a good time. Steam Boots finished up. Yeah. We'll have a Whispering Helm here very soon as well to start dominating one of those creeps. And now it's going to be rather interesting to see what Absolute Legends response is. It looks like they will send the Oval 4 Zephyr mid. Oh, Feral Wrath going in there. Here's how Mobby Walls are up. Ravener actually being the one locked on. He's being ported back though. Will it be time? No, it will not. Was he being ported back? I thought he was, but maybe not actually. Anyway, so Philly's going to get picked off as well. They deny the tower on top of that. She's trying to run actually. The minions are taking some good damage right here. She's just uh, having the minions distract if anything, but yeah, it's not going to be enough. And Ophelia will fall. I want to say the port buff was on him, but it just didn't happen in time. Obviously, it could take it takes what up to five seconds at level two. So yeah, that makes a little bit of sense. It had to be pretty damn close. But in the end, he gets killed. And obviously, a much better response coming out from Lions. And that lead is continuing to grow more and more. You look back at Fuzzy. You mentioned the whispering helm going to the top lane now. Present twenty three is like finally some free farm, and all of a sudden, a level eight Moon Queen shows up and she plinks into the jungle. Where she's gonna go for the TP. Hopefully she can't be seen. Okay, that would have been bad. <laughs> Cancel and been dead anyways, but uh Yeah. Oh, bottom line, Zephyr going. Ball lightning gonna miss though. Not gonna happen. Pumpkin's like, I'm out of here this time, Breaky. Not gonna go <laughs> ahead and screw that one up. He's like, I don't wanna get ridiculed. First it was the Alchemist Bones last season and Ah, uh, now it's the the blast shot right there. Not exactly. Never let it die. I don't. I don't. I love Hanskin, so that's why I love making fun of him. To be to be fair, a blast shot misclick like that is a little more understandable than than the, than the whole Alchemist Bone steal. But because uh, you know that you you obviously you go red to put the goo down. Here I am defending for Hanskin. I don't even, I don't even know why I'm so adamant about it, but I'm just saying it's tough. I mean, you put the goo down, <laughs> then you have to make sure to switch to go for the charge shot. Just, and you're all doing in the heat of the moment, so I gotta give him a little bit of a. It can get here. somewhat difficult up top. Moon Queen and Keeper of the Forest gonna be working on bringing this tower down, and I don't see really any response trying to defend that. Now, counter pushing in the bottom lane might be an opportunity. Uh, Ravener, he's not. Uh, not done, got that portal key just yet. Ten minutes in here, did choose to go for some additional build up items first. And middle lane, I think Pharaoh might be in some trouble. He is going to be frozen right here. Will they have enough damage, though? I don't In fact, Zephyr's actually the one in trouble. Okay. Super KG is like, beef. how dare you underestimate my, my power right here. He completely turns that around on a Zephyr. And then, as you mentioned, the top lane continuing to be pushed in. So, yeah, that was a little silly, honestly. You're level 5 Zephyr with a life tube and a shield, and you have a Glacius there to support against a level 9 Pharaoh. You might have been level 8 at that time. But that was a very risky move in the first place, and it clearly yeah. backfired. So... They are going to push bottom in the meantime. We'll see if maybe they can get something out of here. Ball lightning was a little too early from Cookies, though. But he does pour it back. And will he deny the tower? Yep, yeah, it is in an eye range. Uh, AL, it is starting to fall apart pretty quickly for them here. A little more than it was in game number one as well. So Yeah, and you've also got the the very serious threat of this Moon Queen that's uh, getting pretty close to 500 gold per minute. Uh, a very scary place for her to be. And meanwhile, your Zephyr is just getting nothing done absolutely yep. nothing and meanwhile Ravener up top gonna go down one more time oh no moon queen oh Ophelia's touch is gonna be fine to the end root was used right there so yeah just uh, moon finale was also used it looks like so might not have got the best bounces there but in the end Ravener barely survived so actually that is good they used quite a bit right there obviously 
to go for that kill. But big picture, look what they're doing right here. They port to the triple stack ancients. Moon Queen's gonna clear that up. And then a, a, a Congor definitely isn't out of the question either, especially with a Pharaoh. But um, I don't even think they need that at this point by any means. I mean, clean up the triple stack. He actually buys a quick blade right here. So Firebrand is well on the way. And it, once again, in the meantime, you have a Zephyr that is still trying to finish a Helm of the Black Legion. As he just got his boots at least though. Yes, so, boots number is one. A, awesome. Boots are number one. Cookie's going similar to the Pandemonium build, by the way. He gets the Mighty Blade first. I still think it's going to be Portal Key next, though. Yeah, I'm right Just there like with that. you. Agree on that one, but Lion's definitely been playing quite well. Like you said, taking down the Triple X Tank Ancients now, and uh, able to get some big items up. Puzzle Box is on the way here for Super KGE, and mm. yeah, definitely going to be an interesting one. I, uh, I always like that choice right there, especially against something like Stretched Hag. Really uh, hope yeah. to maybe see her hit the suicide explosion one, and then she just kind of dies. That's always fun. Oh, and Traumata getting caught up by a blind ball lightning. Yeah, I think that was very well played. Cookie's insane. Yeah, caught that till end of that, but yeah, I believe he just launched to the trees, and sure enough, got a got a fish and went for it. So, um, the uh, going back to what you're saying though, yeah, the puzzle box on Pharaoh. Yeah, another great. I mean, I guess you're like Zephyr, the mana brain's also very good too. I guess oh, yeah. it was like Zephyr. An inherently low mana pool, obviously against Ravenar too, could definitely hurt him. So, um, definitely, yeah, I love the choice, especially yeah, if you get some good farm like this. Why not use it uh, effectively like that? And if Puzzle Box does seem like it is building up steam. It's not like it's not like an Energizer steam by any means, or like even an Icon of the Gods that we've seen recently. But um, it's it's it is picked up at here and there, in the, in certain occasions. So a lot more than it was four months ago. Oh yeah, that oh, is yeah. for sure. Good items. And it was one of those dead items for a while. Middle lane lines is pushing though, it looks like. At least Keeper is. Yeah, KG has been trying to set up a gank here for a little while, uh, looking for Glacius or Ophelia, but hasn't quite been able to get into a position where he's wanted to actually open up one of them. Oh, he's going to find Ravener right now, though, and this is going to be uh, perhaps something that he wants. And yep, there's the Hellfire going to go off right here. Ravener does drop the ball, Lightning. The second stun not going to be used, and KG just walks away, so. They both are like, yeah. hey, how are you? Good? All right, see you next week. <laughs> Have a good day. Yeah, okay, I'll see you again. Yeah, just, just kind of toying with him. I don't think he ever intended to make much of it, but uh, at least delaying his farm slightly right there. You keep the gold, or wow, you keep the gold per minute chart up, though, and you do see Moon Queen, 525 GPM. Master of Arms continuing to, well, actually, he's going to pull right here, but I'm sure they've been having some decent stacks going on. They had the Ancient Savvy triple stack. In fact, those are double stacked again now. I wouldn't be surprised at 15. To see that triple stacked, uh, and yeah, Moon Queen's farm just continuing to get bigger and better. And that's always good news, especially if you're Lion Esports Club here. Helm of the Black Legion finally finished on King, Pl oh, wow, King Plato. And obviously nothing against him. It's just been a horrendous start for him as far as how this game has gone. But yeah. at least he has that now. That is a big item pickup for Zephyr. That's where he starts, at least. But it is also kind of that snowballing style of hero at the same time. So, <laughs> yeah, he is. This is not the best news either. Breaky, can you hear that? What's up? Can you hear it coming? Choo, the train. Choo. The train in the background. Yep, yeah, here comes. Happening. Lines five here in the middle. They're going to go ahead and get things started. Pharaoh going to grab Glacius for the first kill. Four minutes soul going out as well. Moving on in the background. Bad Bless hits a couple right there, actually. But the moving on in the background doing so much. Down goes Ravener. You see Zephyr comes in with the Typhoon. Can he at least get some turn kills? Pharaoh's going to end up dropping, it looks like. The auto attacks from Moon Queen, definitely pretty damaging, though. Zephyr barely living for now. Master of Arms will finish him off, but at what cost are there? Master of Arms goes down. And now Moon Queen, actually, a little bit on the run here. You see Andromeda going to try to distract them. Moon Queen should be fine, though. TP, I believe that was a misclick right there. Uh, doesn't matter, though. In the end, I think Andromeda is also going to be fine. And that will be the end of that. So three players fall alliance, actually. I mean, numbers yeah. wise. That wasn't too bad by AL right there. Yeah, you didn't manage to bring down the Moon Queen, but still, that was actually a better hold than it probably should have been. A really nice Typhoon got out of Zephyr was able to section off a pretty significant uh, amount of the Lions backup force right there, and just overall well played. So, Lions, they get what they were looking for, though. They get the uh, tower, a couple hero kills. Puzzle Box finished here on, on Pharaoh, and I mean, just kind of take, take stock of that. Steam Boots Puzzle Box... Bottle power supply, 
about to be a yeah. level 11 pharaoh 16 minutes in like there's nobody on the legion team that can deal with this pharaoh and i'm not even talking about the most farmed hero on this team moon queen is up at 550 gold per minute uh i believe she just bought a mighty blade yep oh no that's a blessed orb so she's going straight geometer's bane and she's gonna have a geos here by about uh, 17 minutes in as she's working on triple stacked ancients uh, the Lions just do such an effective job of taking the smallest laning advantages and turning them into huge resource advantages by this point in the game. Well, the great thing about a hero like Pharaoh in this case especially is that the reason why Pharaoh is seen, I mean, he has died off a lot, but he still is a solid hero. And the reason why he is a solid hero is because he really, if anything, just needs levels. He's not really an item-dependent hero by any means. His skill set definitely gets the job done. Getting items on him is just that luxury. So we're basically at a luxury point already for Super KGE here playing this Pharaoh. And as you said, he's getting close to level 11, so we'll have the level 2 Wrath of the Pharaoh. Uh, he could be a solo ganking artist, especially with that level 1 puzzle box even, as he's going to start leveling that up. So I think that's even another reason why he went for the puzzle box, that he's going to take advantage of these levels that he especially has and a good farm in the sense that, you know what, I, I'm going to be I'm gonna be an individual ganking artist here for my team. Not often we see that from a Pharaoh, but in this game, it definitely could pay off dividends here uh, for Lion Esports Club. But Fuzi, again, his farm, though, he is, he is the star here on the Moon Queen. 576 gold per minute. There's the Wrath of the Pharaoh. Catches up for the... Oh, the Money Walls don't trap her, though. She gets on the outskirts of them somehow. In the meantime, she's still being chased out. Feeling such a come out. Typhoon goes down. Not the best placement, though. Pharaoh's going to be locked out in the middle of it, actually. Ball lightning coming out. But Pharaoh's pretty tanky, and AL is completely on the run right here. I think they should be uh, should be fine, but this is going to open up a possible Congo attempt now. Yeah, with those cooldowns uh, unavailable now, the Ophelia's touch as well as the Typhoon. Absolutely going to be a Congo attempt. You mentioned just how strong Pharaoh is at actually uh, tanking the big guy, making him a little bit easier to bring down. Moon Queen providing quite a bit of damage as well. And then Pharaoh's even got a regeneration rune in his bottle. So going to be working with that one here pretty soon. Even going to start to push out the middle wave. So I think that lions are actually going to move into the bottom uh, bottom jungle immediately after this Congo attempt and really try to take down this tower. Um, no, never mind. Moon Queen going to go up top and defend her tower. She's like, I love farm! Yep. Hey, might as well, obviously, uh, take advantage of the creep wave being pushed up. Also prevent Wretched Hag from getting a free tower push. As President 23 on that Hag, you know, she is slowly recovering. Still has a long way to go, though. Uh, she is still going that Light Brand route, at least. But again, that's just kind of one of those cases that you really are forced to to an extent. Even, it, it, no matter what, it's just such a great farming tool on her eventually into the Grimoire. Um, it's, it's hard to just pass it up no matter the circumstance you're in. So, you know, can't really blame that here. But this also goes back to that idea of kind of that tricore setup coming out here from AL compared to especially Lion setup this game where it's all around that carry, obviously. And you do see the difference taking place. I mean, there's a lot of farm to be spread here on AL. And, and when there's a lot of farm to be spread, you know, basically your worst case scenario is if you all get off to a horrible start obviously because then the recovery chance is it's minimized you, you can't just open a farm on specifically one hero you're all trying to recover in that farm yeah. so it's it, 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 it just has been a very very steep uphill battle here for AL really from the beginning of this game I mean from really the start I mean the 4-2 start in favor of Lions obviously after that crazy crazy fight that happened as a horn blew so you're finding yourself again on that grind. Zephyr, though, he has the Ghost Marchers, the Helm of the Black Legion, at least. And Ravager is actually going for a straight Sharkin, so we did not go the Portal Key. I'm, mm. I almost want. I'm proud of Cookies. I'm proud of Cookies. Here. You're proud of him. I, I think that uh, it's definitely going to be an interesting pickup. It is going to allow him to get a little bit more uh, into these team fights, especially to break root from Keeper of the Forest and then make sure that he's not taking a ton of damage from uh, Moon Finale and whatnot. But they're now going to be really lacking on initiation. They've got two frontline heroes in the Zephyr and the Ravener that are going to be able to just kind of run up front and take a lot of the damage. Not take all of the damage, but they're going to soak up a lot without really feeling it too much. But Lions can just back off. Like, there's nobody that's going to jump in there and lock somebody down so that the rest of the AL team can actually close the distance. So Lions are going to be in this position once more where they do not have to take a fight if they don't want to take a fight. Yeah, absolutely not. And here we go, pushing the bottom lane. So AL, I mean, they're going to get a tower trade up top here, so kind of make the best of the situation, of course. But that is going to be a free secondary tower kill. And again, as you said, I mean, they're going to go right into the base here. There's really no reason not to here if you're lying. Esports Club, force a decision out of AL. They do see the ball lighting you, so 
They know AL at least spending some bit. Probably going to spend it all right here in terms of defending. You can see how far the front lines. Ravner taking some front front damage. He has that shrunken head, though. Will he be able to make some work of that? Moon Queen, the Storm Blaze coming out. Taking some good damage, but look at the return for Moon Queen. The Glades are going to start bouncing. They locked in on her. She has the target alive in because of Typhoon. She is dropping. She is going to fall right there, but now she's going to come back. Here's the response for Alliance. Up comes Moon Queen. The Bat Blast gets assembled. He was right there. Pharaoh gets killed. The swap on a Moon Queen. She has the Moon Finale up, though. But Lines is actually on the run. They may have overgrinded a little bit too right here. Red Shag is going to eventually fall, though. The, the Moon Blades are dancing and flying around all over the place. But it looks like Ophelia is going to fall. In. No, the locked in the Moon Queen. Oh, the minions! Not enough! Target them! Oh, no! God, she somehow lives there, Beef. How did that happen? She got the invis there from Keeper of the Forest, and I'm like, look at the Minotaurs. I'm like, damn it, you stupid Minotaurs. Grow a brain, target the Moon Queen. But she was invisible. And just really good positioning right there with Yonasum Fan, his minions as well, and making sure to get the invis off on the Moon Queen. Extremely important. And so, with that being said, they do lose the token right there. They bring home four hero kills and a tower, but they weren't able to take home the rack. So a decent job defending from the Absolute Legends, but I, I think that they're just kind of falling further and further behind right now. And there's nothing that they can really do to stop this Moon Queen. With no initiation potential, with no solo gankers, there's actually nothing that they can do to stop this Moon Queen. And at this point, short of massive, massive throws or somebody disconnecting from lines or something, there's not a whole lot that Absolute Legends is going to be able to do. But that's not going to stop them from fighting this one out. They can still take those fights in the, the base and hope that Lions overextends. They take a fight anywhere else, though, and this game will likely end very quickly. Well, Lions, Lions did give AL a little bit of a present, at least a chance at a present right there at that push decision. I mean, instead of going in, it, we saw last game even. I mean, Lions was doing a good job of, of split pushing, getting AL to respond, and just falling back after the fact. You know, that that's what they're going for. It was kind of, it was the same idea there. I mean, so I'm actually very, a little bit, uh, not, not sure what Lions was really hoping to have happen there. I mean, pushing into the base like that. We're still fairly early on in the game. It, it was a risky move by them, and it almost completely backfired. If Moon Queen had died there at the very end especially, you know, AL actually would have been felt very, very good. I mean, there was no buybacks used or anything like that. So, uh, Lions could have easily just gotten the port back and then just fallen back themselves and continue to farm, clean up the resources, and then just go back. So, sure, that might have been the more boring route for us as a spectator, <laughs> but it would have been a safer route and, you know, probably the better choice. But in the end, the long run, they are still obviously in the lead, and... Yeah, not too concerned about that. But. I feel that uh, at that point, Lions was like, "We are in a big advantage. We can force the team fights on our terms right now," and they were comfortable taking that fight, um, especially with the token up, saying that if we can get a tower right here and not lose token, that's great. That means we can come back and get a Rex without losing token. In this case, they lost the token. They almost lost Moon Queen, like you said. So things not going exactly according to plan, but they're yeah. still all right with that one. Now they're just going to go back and sit, wait, get their next tier items. In this case, the Shrunken Head on Moon Queen, which will allow her to just kind of do whatever the hell she wants. And uh, Puzzle Box Level 2 up now. Refresher here on Keeper, but middle lane breaky. They're jumping Pharaoh. He has a double damage bottle. He actually ran through the Pharaoh's on one of the cabinet champions to get away. Moment walls go up. And now they're turned around. They're taking a lot of damage. He gets the Shrunken Head up. The Root comes out. The Swap's going to stop the TP. He will eventually fall. And now Lion's looking to fight back on them strong. Ravener does have enough for the buyback. We see the center of the Glacius. He is going to fall as well. They already got the Cutter Zephyr. GG well plays being called. Lion's is going to take game number two right there. As that's how it'll end. Okay, so got a little bit off guard. In fact, Ail the one to initiate on a Pharaoh. Risky choice in the first place. And that clearly did not work out in the end beef.